Hello and welcome to a special bulletin for JW Watch. Earlier this month, on December 2nd, Jehovah's Witnesses hit back at the withdrawal of approximately 1.5 million euros in annual Norwegian government funding. In a special update video hosted by governing body member Anthony Morris, the move was declared unconstitutional and an unprecedented attack on religious freedom in Norway. Recently, the government of Norway decided that Jehovah's Witnesses would no longer receive certain state benefits that are provided to all registered religions. The authorities in Norway have threatened to remove our legal registration because of our scriptural beliefs and practices regarding disfellowshipping. This decision is unconstitutional and an unprecedented attack on religious freedom in Norway. In response to the withdrawal of state funding in Norway and broad affairs over alleged persecution, Morris announced that Jehovah's Witnesses have established a special Freedom of Worship office at the organization's Central European branch in Selters, Germany, and encouraged viewers to make the issue a matter of prayer. We have recently established the Freedom of Worship Office at the Central Europe branch. This headquarters department will coordinate our efforts to defend our worship in Europe. In the future, various governments will challenge our freedom of worship. They may pressure us to change our scriptural beliefs, but we're certainly not going to do that. Efforts are being made to address this issue. In the meantime, please, make it a matter of prayer. With Jehovah's Witnesses unambiguously claiming the move to withdraw state funding and potentially deregister the group in Norway a violation of freedom of worship, it's worth asking the question, what does freedom of worship actually entail and are the Norwegian authorities truly removing it from Jehovah's Witnesses? In truth, Article 9 of the European Convention on Human Rights defines freedom of worship as follows. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom, either alone or in community with others, and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in worship, teaching, practice and observance. It's worth noting that Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway, both collectively and individually, remain free to exercise their freedom of thought, conscience and religion, irrespective of whether the group receives 1.5 million euros annually in government funding or are officially registered as a religion. Moreover, the disfellowshipping practice of Jehovah's Witnesses forming the basis for the government's decision is itself in contravention of the very freedom of worship provisions to which the group is appealing. Specifically, individual Jehovah's Witnesses are routinely penalised through mandatory shunning and family estrangement if they happen to change their religion, a decision that is considered apostasy and a disfellowshipping offence. As recently as the 2022 Pursue Peace Convention, governing body member David Splain reiterated the need for obedience in this area. The heart is treacherous. We might allow our emotions to get the better of us. For example, when a family member is disfellowshipped. If the person is living outside the home, we know that we should limit our association to necessary family business. Now, if the family was never very close, that might not be a problem. But suppose family ties are really strong. That can be a challenge. If we allow ourselves to be ruled by emotion rather than by scriptural principles, we could stretch the meaning of necessary family business to include almost any activity. The heart is treacherous. Unfortunately, the emotional impact of shunning was sidestepped entirely in the recent response to the Norway decision and replaced by a number of unrelated or red herring arguments. Viewers were reminded of how well established the group is in Norway. 
the fact that it suffered under Nazi occupation 80 years ago, and the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses are known as good citizens. Jehovah's Witnesses have been actively preaching the good news in Norway for more than 120 years. In fact, Jehovah's Witnesses suffered for their faith under the Nazi occupation of Norway during World War II. Commenting on how Jehovah's Witnesses were the only religious group who stood firm against the Nazis, a previous minister for religion exclaimed, people throughout the country should know about this, especially young ones would benefit from this information. We've always been known as good citizens. In fact, a public report stated that Jehovah's Witnesses are careful to obey the laws of the land. Of course, whether reminders of longevity, good behavior, or historic maltreatment are enough to convince the Norwegian government to reverse its decision remains to be seen. But before I leave you, I want to share some final thoughts with anyone watching this bulletin who may be a believing Jehovah's Witness. Please consider the following words in 1 Corinthians 7 verses 29 to 31. Moreover, this I say, brothers, the time left is reduced. From now on, let those who have wives be as those who had none, and those who weep as those who do not weep and those who rejoice as those who do not rejoice, and those who buy as those who do not possess, and those making use of the world as those not using it to the full, for the scene of this world is changing. If the Bible urges Christians to not use the world to the full, and elsewhere in 1 Peter 2 verse 11 describes Christians as temporary residents, is it reasonable for Jehovah's Witnesses to threaten legal action simply because a particular government isn't giving them money? Shouldn't it be enough that Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway are allowed to continue with their worship uninterrupted, regardless of any failure to qualify for financial kickbacks from Caesar, especially if these are intended for what they consider to be false religious entities comprising Babylon the Great, the world empire of false religion? Anyway, I'll leave you with those thoughts. Here at JW Watch, we will continue to monitor the situation and bring you any new developments as they arise. In the meantime, thank you for watching. <laughs>